Welcome to the Swim Swam Podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining us today, we've got a very special guest, Olympic champion, European champion, you name it. Basically, she has won it most recently, 2022 world champion in the 50 breast bronze medalist in the 100 breast. Today, we are joined by Ruta Melutite. How's it going? Hi, Coleman. It's going good. <laughs> I'm, I'm at home, uh, happy to be with my family and, and close ones around me. So, yeah, it's nice. What is the weather like uh, during summer in Lithuania? Um, It's actually really good. I mean, a lot of people complain about the frequent rains and uh, kind of... Um, this bipolar weather where you get this very hot day and then suddenly get a cold day and then some rain. So it's a bit like that usually in Lithuania, but um, it's been, the last few days have been really nice, really hot. Uh, there has been some rain, but we've been lucky enough not to have the heat wave that UK is experiencing, for example. So I don't know, I always think of Lithuania as this little, uh, I don't know, sacred piece of land that is always gets like lucky with you know everything <laughs> with the weather and and air and uh, yeah so i don't know it's it's been a beautiful summer that i've been here um so yeah wow you're really selling me on lithuania <laughs> <laughs> yeah come visit come visit for sure. This sacred little piece of land um yeah seriously sure, I, yeah, yeah, i might yeah. have to now um so but first of all, I want to talk about Lithuania sounds great. I want to talk about Budapest. Um, this was your first competition or first, I guess, uh, inter major international competition in quite some time. Um, I think since 2018, maybe, maybe 19, but um, okay. So how did it just coming into this meet? Um, yeah, I, we weren't sure if you, if you were even going to compete until a couple months before i'm not sure how certain it was for you either but um just coming into this meet how did it feel to be back on that pinnacle stage well i wasn't sure if i was gonna compete you know like even like two weeks up like before the world championships so for me it was very interesting a very interesting process just of you know figuring out you know how I feel getting, you know, through these doubts that I'm having about, you know, coming back, should I be back? Should I be not? Um, and then in the end, kind of accepting and sort of surrendering to the experience because, okay, I'm here. I come to this point, maybe I'm still, I'm sure, I'm sure about this, but I'm, I'm just going to, you know, be fully present and just, you know, give it my my best and see what happens so you know it was also very interesting because it's you know um i have to, i can i can compare two different states uh and two different me's like me three years ago almost four years ago and me now and you know swimming competition hasn't changed like the whole <laughs> uh thing is the same most of the people are the same uh, most of the people I know and so it was a very interesting experience it was like wow I get to li relive this again and like in a whole different way so I had I've had really actually good time like I really enjoyed it and I think um, you know it really worked for me that you know I just said to myself okay I'm not gonna put any pressure on myself like to to come back or not to come back i'm just here and i'm just gonna you know just enjoy it and give it my best so yeah like um it was it was very interesting to 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 come back after so you know a few years and to be in a competition like this differently do you 
when you stepped up to your first race in the hundred breasts, <clears throat> do you have a certain mentality or mindset that you try to approach your race with? And did you have that same mentality or mindset heading into that hundred breast again, after having not been on this stage for a while? Yeah, I think like that state of mind, that pre-race kind of state of mind hasn't changed that much. Although what is different now that I was, you know, able to kind of let go of the outcome of the, you know, winning or not winning of, you know, getting a medal or or not getting a medal. Whereas I think for many years um, you know, after Olympics, I kind of got into this you know, not a medal is not a, an option, you know, I'm, I'm racing to, to win. And it kind of became about these medals, about winning and not, you know, so much about the process and about enjoying it. So now, you know, I was kind of, you know, I would see that, you know, some thought would come up like, oh, you know, I should get, you know, I should get the medal or whatever, because I, I didn't even expect to go this fast. So when I realized, you know, there's a chance there, <clears throat> it was interesting to see, but that, you know, this um, wish to win come up. But then at the same time, you know, it was just kind of going back to the basics, you know, just getting focused, getting calm mm. and really kind of just surrendering to that moment. Because I think, you know, when the race day comes, you always get these thoughts, you know, I should, I, you know, maybe I shouldn't have... Uh, you know, done this, or I should have done more of that. And, you know, it was just for me, like a huge learning experience about trusting my body, because, you know, in my head, I didn't, you know, I didn't feel like it worked that hard. And, you know, I, I really just kind of went into races, um, still very unsure, but, but I think, um, you know, I was just as focused and and as in the moment, you know, as I used to be. So that kind of hasn't changed. So then after winning that, you know, you, you place third in the 100 breast, you get a bronze medal. Um, I was going to ask you, did you know that you could win the 50 after the 100? But that seems like a, a poor worded question after <laughs> hearing your last answer. Um, so going into the 50, after having already meddled, what was your mindset there? Were you still able to focus on the process? Were you kind of like, oh, I think I can get another medal? Um, how did you balance that? Yeah, there was definitely that, you know, like, okay, like I knew I, I can, I can get a medal. And I felt really good, actually. Like I felt uh, very powerful and fast. Um, and, um, and I don't know, like for me, like um, I, I I kind of got a little imbalanced after the 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 win the the bronze because you know I was kind of like on my social media a lot and still like checking and like answering people and I got so many like you know congratulations for the for the hundred breast so that kind of put me off a little bit and I think I remember going into heats like really not feeling it at all and and I kind of just went like okay I'm you know I'm just not even gonna try that much and see what happens and then I kind of took it as a sign that I came like I came 16th and I got into semi by a chance and uh, and then yeah I just kind of tried to focus again on on the process and on on getting it done the right way and not you know worrying about the the outcome and there was there had to be more of that because i had these like thoughts come up already but uh yeah i think uh sorry about that um i think i managed it quite well um yeah i just I think, um, you know, like meditation helps a lot in these moments and, 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 uh, mindfulness. So I really like use that a lot. Did, so then you went, like you said, it was kind of a, it's a really cool story. You get 16th 
in prelims of the 50 breasts, barely squeak into that semifinal and semifinals, you're coming at your, your second seed headed into the final and the final you touch first, um, world title. Once again, world champion, did that, did that imbalance you as well coming off of that? Just kind of, again, going into that mindset of like, Oh, I won, even though the meet was already over. No, I mean, actually I really got like, like a huge positive, um, I don't know what's like, what to call it. Like, um, um no it wasn't it wasn't an imbalance actually like it was like you know for the first time I kind of like I really was I was really really happy about it but um at the same time I was kind of like calm you know like okay I won and that's super great you know that gives me so much confidence um it really like I really needed that I think um you know, on so many levels. Um, and at the same time, it was like, also like this light feeling, like it's not, you know, it's a big deal, but at the same time, you know, I don't know how to say it. It's mm, like, I didn't feel like a lot of, you know, pressure coming off from that. So, yeah, you know what imbalanced me was like these like interviews like right after the race because <laughs> because you know like there's this like pure moment of you know touching the wall, seeing the result and like you know feeling the emotions, but then like within like half a minute you have to go through these like you know 10 interviews in a row and then like people asking you like so how do you feel? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? And and then like so what does it feel like comparing like this year to that year like so that was kind of like whoa and I just wanted to like enjoy the moment and um yeah but I mean you know that's also you know like a, a learning experience so um that's the only thing really but all in all like it it just gave me a, a huge boost of um confidence and you know self-belief and not only in swimming, just, you know, in general, like, you know, as a human. So, yeah. So you spoke about meditation and mindfulness uh, and that helping throughout the meet, throughout, especially after the 100 breast medal going into the 50. Um, when did you start picking that up or when did that become a staple for you to, you know, get your mind on the right track? Um, so like the first time I tried meditating, I think it was around 2015, like 16. And I had uh, an eating disorder that uh, was very, very out of hand. And just, I didn't know what to do. And I didn't, you know, ask for help at the time. And I was really kind of alone with it. So like, I just tried a million things with it. And one of them was meditation. So that was like my first experience doing meditation, which actually helped me quite a bit to, to kind of understand myself and, and, and my behavior and help me with my eating disorder. But um, later on, kind of, it was very on and off kind of thing. And um, yeah, just as the years went by, kind of, you know, um, some practice piled up and yeah i've been doing it more regularly recently and it's I, i've kind of drifted off your question but it's like you asked about the benefits of it sorry so i think you know for me it's about kind of just staying in your own center and especially in like you know in in competitions you get this crazy amount of input from you know external input you know the people in the stands the the lights the the commentary, the, you know, the, the whole hype, you know, and it's, it's sometimes easy to kind of lose yourself in that, you know, whole hype. So for me, you know, meditation and mindfulness really helps to feel myself, you know, like stay calm, feel my body. Um, and, and I think what makes a good, good swim uh, or makes swimming good is like when, when, when a swimmer is able to 
really be mindful about his moves, you know, about his body and to really, really be connected, um, you know, head to toes with your body, you know, mind and body connection. So, yeah, I mean, it helps in all areas, I think, <laughs> of your life. So, um, I, I wouldn't say, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a master at it or, and, you know, there's days and sometimes weeks that I don't do it, but, but, um, yeah, like it's, it's definitely been a huge part of my life, uh, for the past few years. So that's, that's really interesting. That's certainly not an answer I expected. Um, just you don't usually hear, I had an eating disorder. So meditation was, was a solution, right? Um, it wasn't a solution, you... but it was like, you know, um, <laughs> it was helpful. It was a huge help. Yeah, it was helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which which makes a lot of sense to me. But again, it was a, a little surprising. Is um, I'm kind of curious: is there a culture, or is there in, in Lithuania, or where you were at the time? Um, did you feel like you couldn't get help around that eating disorder? I mean, in the U.S., I think it's this weird balance where you're supposed to talk about it, but it's also kind of stigmatized to where you know you're th this shouldn't be something that's happening to you or or you should i don't know um is there is there any was there any sort of stigma around it at the time and was there did you find resources eventually or was that hard to come by for you when you were dealing with that um well at the beginning um i also felt very much ashamed of it and i really hid it for a long time um, you know, from my friends, from my colleagues, from uh, swimming colleagues, from my coaches. And it really took a while to kind of open up about it. But then once I did, I realized, you know, you know, there was more of a stigma in my head because, you know, people usually are accepting of it. And usually, I mean, <laughs> there was an instance, you know, when I told my coach that um, kind of I was trying to go around it, you know, like, so I have this little problem, you know, and um, when I eat too much, then I make myself sick. And it was kind of at, out of hand at the time, but, you know, the way I was telling it, it was like, you know, sometimes. <laughs> and, you know, the first thing he said was just like, oh, at least you get the calories out. And then, you know, obviously that wasn't a very good answer for me, but, you know, after a while, like, you know, I found ways and safe people to tell that to and I got some help eventually but it took me a while and actually I think when I started meditating more I was actually in in the U.S. in, in L.A. at the time um no I mean no sorry in UK um but then I started doing it more and more um actually in in, in and when I was in the U.S. um so I think, you know, like, uh, I think it was, it's like, it, it's kind of stigmatized and a lot of people don't speak about it. So it's like hard to open up. And if more people, you know, talk about it, then more people feel safe to open up. And I think, yeah, there's definitely some stigma around it, I think. Um, because I know, you know, some girls from swimming and from, you um, some old clubs that I used to swim at that they had you know eating disorders that they only come out um to have had them like years later you know um <laughs> we went to st school together I was at the same you know I was having the same problem and we didn't even know that you know we didn't tell each other so yeah for sure yeah there's I think there's especially maybe in sport you know yeah. Did, was that something that came about, uh, because as a result or in part as a result of your success in swimming or just of your swimming in general, or do you think that was kind of unrelated and it, you know, kind of bled into your swimming? I think it wasn't so related, but, um, it was, I think it was more like, you know, something that it comes probably from your childhood, I, I, I believe. In. And um, I think, you know, swimming, mm, you know, it's very, it's a sport, you know, when your body is so visible. 
So it definitely didn't help me that, you know, when I, I started hitting puberty, you know, I would get these comments, you know, like from coaches, oh, you seem a little, you know, heavy or, you know, you put on some weight, you should, you know, um, you should really like worry about that and, you know, do something. And, you know, rather than someone really educating you about, you know, healthy eating or healthy eating habits or, you know, problems around food, um, what I mostly get is like, you know, hey, lose some weight, you know. <laughs> so and then I, at the time, you know, it it all started. So it really, you know, didn't, you know, didn't help. And I was, you know, getting more and more conscious about, you know, my body and then so uh, simultaneously, you know, gaining weight, losing weight, gaining weight. And yeah, like really like ashamed of my body. So, um, yeah, like I feel like there, there could have been more of a um, helpful <laughs> um, side to, to, to when, when it comes to, you know, eating and food in, in, in the teams that I was in. So then eventually when you when you did find help or when you were able to deal with it in a in a healthy way what form did that come in how how were you able to deal with it aside from you know the meditation obviously being one form of helpfulness um so i think like what meditation really helped me you know like to start actually like more doing more of a self-care you know and what really helped was therapy and at some for some periods of time medication and then more therapy and more you know you know mindfulness and kind of self-awareness you know so and you know it's still a process that I'm going through um but yeah I think it's been very huge therapy has been very huge for me yeah and talking about it also, I mean, you know, like when you have this kind of, you know, whether it's an addiction, because, you know, I kind of see it as, a, as an addiction, really. So I think when, when you keep it, you know, closed and hidden, it kind of grows. So like when you put it out in the open, put it out in the light, it's, you know, it's got, it's got less power over you, I think. So it's important to talk about it. So it's, it sounds like um, your mental health has become a priority for you and that you are doing a lot of things to just kind of help yourself in that area, which is really, um, comforting and great to hear, especially from someone who is an elite level athlete from a very young age. Um, when, when did that become a priority for you? You know, when did you start seeking help for these things, start therapy? Um, you know, was it, after you had had this huge success, was it for that? Was you know what? What was the timeline for you seeking help and the and for your mental health? Yeah, it was after after you know the biggest successes, and it was really a few months before Rio Olympics two thousand sixteen that I kind of reached a point where I really felt like. I can't carry on without you know talking about it and I just really needed to to tell let someone know and I kind of took a while but yeah it was like a couple months before Rio that I told my coaches that you know I'm I'm having these problems and I think I need some help and let's do something about it but of course you know it's two months before the Olympics everyone's priorities is racing and you know, for me, it was, it wasn't a priority for me. I wanted to feel better. So, I mean, it was a time that I kind of, you know, started this journey, I guess, to, 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 um, to help myself to find answers. And um, yeah, like I said, it's not like, you know, a straight road that you, once you start, it's like, you know, <laughs> um, even now, you know, I fall off fall off and then don't do you know things that are good for me for you know weeks and and then I come back on it again and then look after myself and then yeah it's like this ongoing process but yeah like I would say that for me definitely like 2014-15 have been very hard and I kind of reached a point 
yeah before Rio Olympics I think and that after that that I followed with um, Rio Olympics with a break and I took a break from swimming for six months almost I think <clears throat> so yeah and um <laughs> so so was that what was that olympic experience like you know knowing that again like you said maybe the people in your camp or just people generally it's the olympics the priority is kind of on racing but you know so close before that you were like i'm not in a good place i want to feel better but here i am at this at, at this competition again expected to race and race at my best I just kind of pulled through it, you know, and there wasn't much time to kind of talk about, you know, hey, I'm not feeling very, you know, very well. You know, it was kind of like, okay, let's just go and see what happens. Let's participate and do our best. But yeah, I think I kind of just pushed aside what I was feeling and I didn't really talk about it a lot. I think, you know, there was a huge amount of pressure, you know, from from my country you know <laughs> you know i would be seeing these adverts you know that i have the sponsorship deal with uh, and and then you know there there'll be like people you know like shouting like root, ah, root. <laughs> and you know and then i was really like not feeling it at, at all so you know after london olympics of course there was a huge amount of expectation and and yeah, it was it was quite tough, I think, because I kind of felt like I had to, you know, put up a front, you know, didn't want to disappoint people, didn't want to let people down, you know, and kind of, mm, yeah, I think um, I was just really going through the motions. So after the Olympics, you, you take this six month break. Um, and then you kind of, you come back, but you, you go to a few different places. You were in, uh, the UK, as you mentioned for a while, you were in LA for a while. Um, can you talk about just kind of those training changes, the, the location changes, what inspired those and, and what you feel like you gained from them? So I was, yeah, in, in UK, um, with one team one coach um well actually a few coaches uh team of coaches but um one main coach for for almost seven years and yeah like feel felt like really i really need to change something and like i said like i reached the kind of a breaking point just right before the rio olympics and, you know, at the time I already knew just, you know, even months before that, you know, this is going to be my last Olympics with, you know, swimming here, training in, in UK. And after this, I'm, you know, whatever happens, I'm, <laughs> I need to leave because I really need to change. And, um, and yeah, I think like, I really want, I didn't know exactly where I want to base myself. And at the time I wanted to, actually after six months i wanted to go to la but um it just so happened that i ended up um, getting coached by um a lithuanian coach and then we decided you know i'm gonna put off my uh, u.s trip and we're just gonna travel and train at different teams uh and that's what we did for like a year and kind of trained on on our own and joined the team and that was really um interesting and um um quite chaotic but um you know i realized that you know i can work in more than one place you know i was kind of like raised in this kind of as a swimmer in this old way that you have to stick to one team and not change it for ages if it's going well you should stay here forever you know and um and yeah, like I really, you know, got to see many, many different places and that was fun. And then I kind of just went on my own and went to LA on my own. And at, at the time, you know, I was already, I think, you know, that break wasn't enough. Like <laughs> I wasn't still ready to be back. And, and, mm, 
I mean, for me, it was like a very, it was very uh, uh, growing experience because, you know, I just for most of the time before, um, there was always this coach that was kind of like, who would take responsibility for me and who I would have to be responsible to. And um, this very kind of tight, you know, relationship that, you know, can win a practice and, and um you know you know you you have to you know tell them every time you go somewhere and whatever and when i came to la what happened you know and i'm so grateful for this experience with the um, coach dave you know that i really felt what it was like to be um a grown up swimmer you know because he he isn't one of those coaches that pushes you or asks you or you know, even, you know, mm, I don't know, um, that is very tied up in, 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 in your result or, or how you do, you know, I really experienced that, you know, I can choose whether I want to work or I don't want to work. And if I did, then, you know, they would respond and we would, we would be, you know, we'd be working great together. And if I didn't, then, it was up to me, you know, he wouldn't take responsibility. And I had that freedom, you know, to choose whether I want to work or not. And, and that was really great. You know, that was really great. And, um, and I really enjoyed that. And, 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 you know, it was like something very different um, to have this uh, independency and, and, and also being able to, you know, take responsibility for your own swimming, you know, um so yeah but um so it happened that at the time it was also kind of in my mind and oh, my mind wasn't in the swimming anymore and 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 um yeah but but yeah like I'm super grateful for all of that experience you know th those few years that after Rio Olympics of you know traveling a lot and then I realized, you know, that doesn't quite work for me. I, I kind of, I like to travel, but not too much. You know, always being on the road is also very tiring, you know. And it's kind of nice to have this, like, you know, community that you are familiar with and, you know, that you, that you know and you see more often. And, and, and yeah, so, um, yeah. <laughs> um, so how long did you end up? Do you remember what the time frame was that you were with Dave Salo in total? Uh, it was nearly, it was, I think it was a year, yeah, a year and, and, and a couple months. Yeah, and, and yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so you're with him for a while. And then after LA, where did you end up going to next? I ended up going home because... Um, I missed the tests and yeah, like I couldn't really stay in LA anymore. And um, I, I I got the letter uh, from, from WADA about my third missed test. And then um, within a month or so, I moved back to Lithuania and I've been back since. Uh, yeah. Let's, let's talk about these missed tests. What, what, can you give me just your side of this story? Um, because we've never heard from you about it. And uh, it didn't, I, I don't know. Did you mean to miss the test? Were you like, oh yeah, it's, that's okay. I want to, I want a two year break from competition anyway. Um, what, what's the backstory there? Yeah. I mean, I didn't do it on purpose, but um, I think, you know, maybe subconsciously I did <laughs> because um you know, I I was really struggling to 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 feel right to be to be in a good state of mind, and it was still very um, kind of tough going being in LA for me, and and I wasn't you know training that much and kind of been also pondering on this question whether to continue swimming or not. You know, it's for a while. Um yeah and and it kind of just all fell together like I, I remember getting the the letter and it was 
a big relief for me because I didn't have to make that decision myself because it was a very very it was very scary you know because to whom to whoever I would try to get advice about this you know they'll be like you're 22 you know what you can't you know just quit swimming <laughs> you're so good and um, you know I had also had this you know huge you know expectation and this kind of I guess identity you know and it was hard to kind of let go of that and um yeah with the tests it was kind of like I missed one because there was I I just didn't put the dates right and then they came the next day and then one I missed when I was on a vacation in at Lithuania and another one I missed um also and yeah I was I, was, I wasn't very good at filling in my atoms and and um I got away with it many times you know just you know not filling my whereabouts and then the the testers would just wouldn't come and I'll be fine and yeah and um no it just um you know I wasn't very surprised with the way you know things were going but uh I didn't yeah I definitely didn't do it on purpose so then uh, you have this two year racing suspension. How, how did you handle that? You know, were uh, initially, were you like, okay, this is it. I'm, I'm done with swimming. I'm going to retire. Or did you take some time out of the pool? Um, what, what did those two, two years look like for you? Yeah. I, I felt like, yeah, this is me, you know, quitting. Of course there was a part of me that kind of, felt like okay I'm still young you know there's you know we'll see what happens you know so many people so many great athletes that we know you know have quit and then then come back and then then quit again and come back and you know knowing my love for the sport I kind of I wasn't you know exactly sure whether this was good but but you know I acted like I acted like it was and I didn't swim there was a few a couple of weeks every now and then that I would I would try it and then I would just leave and yeah I was really doing a bunch of different stuff completely unrelated to swimming and 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 this kind of lifestyle uh, athletic lifestyle so um yeah but um it didn't you know exactly like leave my my thoughts um entirely um, for the most part so so was there a, a point where you got back into the pool seriously and like really it's like okay I'm gonna start training again and if so when when was that point for you um I think it was the spring of 2021 that it was a very tough winter for me and you know I think with the pandemic and everything and and just mentally I really felt you know I really need to do something because I mean you know body wise I mean I started I finished my school I started university and um, but at the same time you know like this break it was quite hard because you know I was so used to having to do something and you know having this tight schedule and um you know knowing what i'm gonna do months in advance years in advance you know um so it was hard uh because it was like okay so what do i do now like what who do i be you know like um (laughs) do i have some skills other than you know uh, swimming um but uh going back to when i started was yeah the spring uh, of of last year I think that I went to swim for a bit for a couple months um, just kind of for my mental health really and then I kind of stopped and then it was I think the summer of last year that I kind of started swimming again or like the fall and 
my two year ban just finished and um and and basically in Lithuania you can you, if you win a gold medal in 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 any sport in Olympics you get this like pension a monthly pension basically for the rest of your life so <laughs> when i got the two years suspension i actually um i i retired but then i was told that this two years won't count if i am retired and so if i want to get that pension um i have to be in swimming so that means i'll have to be available for testing uh, for those two years that I'm off um, to be able to get that two years out of my way and then I can retire, then I can get my pension if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, like this June, last June, the, the two, year, two year suspension lifted and then I went to my federation and I said, okay, I want to retire now so I can get the pension. <laughs> and then, because they have to like send the letter to the FINA and then the FINA has to approve and then you're officially retired, this whole procedure. And they told me, okay, so, but you've been swimming a little bit, you know, like, do you want to try, like maybe? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know, yeah. I mean, but I kind of, you know, I would like to, you know, get the pension. <laughs> and then they said, okay, uh, we'll give you the the whatever you get for the pension until for a couple months until the Lithuanian short course. And if you feel like you're gonna you you wanna swim, you can swim. And if you don't, you don't, and then you can retire because once you retire, it's like coming back takes a while for them to approve you again or something, like it takes a few months. And then, and so I went, okay, let's see. And then I started my first year of uni. I started training on and off a bit. And then, yeah, the December came and I was like, okay, I'm going to do the um, Lithuanian short course. And yeah, and that's, that's how it happened. And I was like, okay, so I guess I'm swimming again. <laughs> yeah, like it's been like that. It's been in interesting. That's quite the journey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot. Um, I have to, I'm, I am really curious was, what was it like watching your first Olympics in three iterations that you weren't competing in? Um, sorry, what? So did you watch the Olympics in Tokyo? And, and if so, what was it like not being there, but seeing it? No, I didn't watch it, but no, I didn't watch it. And I heard that it was, you know, there was no people in the stands. It was really weird. So I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm happy that I didn't go. <laughs> yeah. It seemed very dry, like, you know. <laughs> yeah, that, that that makes sense. Seemed very dry. Yeah. Um, and so so then you, you kind of make this return. And um, uh, on a similar time, I don't know exactly when it came out. Maybe you can fill in this blank for me, but, um, you put, you put a, the, the blood in the water video out, which is, um, a really powerful video. You know, it's a commentary on the war in Ukraine. Um, can you give us a little backstory as to how that happened? Um, how it kind of all came together and what you were hoping to, um, to do, you know, to accomplish with that video. Uh, so yeah, it was, you know, the, the, uh, the whole country, all of Lithuania has been, we've been very, very touched and shocked and heartbroken by what's happening in Ukraine, you know, by Russia's invasion and basically a genocide that's happening. And we feel very, very close to it because we've been in Soviet Union, which, you know, it was no it wasn't a union we were um occupied and um you know our grand grandparents were um deported and you know this whole um this whole thing was it's it's so close to us and yeah with um with the second month of, of war you know we felt like there was this huge, you know, um, 
need to kind of remind everyone because you know the first month is like everyone's going crazy and you know this war and it's it, it's kind of sort of starts to become a norm you know when it happens for so long like it is now you know or it's just another news story and or it's another another place bombed okay you know so yeah we this kind of idea came to my friend you know of dying in this uh, a river uh, or some water with paint with red paint and it was um all good like ecological like uh, paint uh, that does no harm <laughs> they use it on like saint patrick's days and and stuff to die river so yeah it's definitely harmless but uh yeah and then we wanted to kind of um lift everyone's spirits you know and to remind that you know we have to keep pushing through because we know lithuania and and it was you know it's a message to Lithuania and also the rest of the world that you know, Ukraine needs our help and and we're in this together you know our donations matter you know talking about it matters and um yeah we felt like you know this visually very visually strong and symbolic message can really you know inspire people to act and um that was really it you know this is kind of simple we just you know, wanted to to bring more people in and 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 you know, with swimming being such a kind of symbol of hope, you know, and of getting through, of swimming through. Um and it was also, you know, like a message like for me, I guess for the athletes you know because a lot of athletes i see are remaining you know very kind of neutral or quiet about it like it's not happening you know and for me it was important to maybe show that you know an athlete can be an activist too you know or or can i have a say in in, in what is happening in the world so yeah mm. Has, has that video or just I really that stance of an athlete can be more than an athlete, right? It, they can they can have stances on things that are going on in the world around them. Um, has that been a part of this comeback for you or has it developed as a part of this return to swimming for you since, since you've been on this journey for the past eight, 10 months? Mm -hmm. So could you repeat the question? I didn't quite get it. Yeah. Um, has, has this, has that mindset of being more than an athlete or taking stances, has that been a part of your, your comeback, um, your, your return to swimming? Yeah, I think so. It's, it's, yeah, it's definitely like, uh, I think, you know, a part of me that's I feel like I'm not, you know, only an athlete myself. I kind of have this, I guess I'm not over identifying with the, you know, athlete and I'm able to kind of separate some, you know, an athlete part of me and then, you know, um, and not an athlete part of me, a human part of me, I guess. I mean, all of that is human, but it's kind of a role that, you know, you take, but yeah, I think, it's important and I feel you know a lot when you're when you're when you're in that in in the athletic world I think you know a lot of it is about just being an athlete you know just doing good results sometimes it's even about you know pushing our education to the side and you know just focusing on 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 the um, on the performance, which is of course is fine, and and sometimes you know I've I'm done it myself, but I feel like yeah, like there could be more of that. You know, we're also human here, and 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 um, and I feel like uh, yeah, that that a lot of people forget that, and they get really caught up in this whole you know. <laughs> performance results medals 
uh, swimming, you know, um, this whole game. And and it's it's been, I feel like, important for me to kind of be in, stand on my own feet and to kind of feel that, you know, I'm not only just a swimmer, you know. There are things that matter to me. I'm interested in, in many other things and 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 also I can I can care about the things and 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 do stuff that's not so related to the sports I guess but <laughs> I don't know um yeah and 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 what's been good about you know having a break is that kind of getting out of this kind of mm, sort of endless game you know of achieving achieving and and pushing for the results and and forgetting you know your own needs in the process um now you know it's a lot less serious for me and i have this kind of freedom of you know just being able to enjoy and you know and it just shows that you know being relaxed like really helps <laughs> you know and 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 just um yeah being present in the process it's great to hear <laughs> it's it's a really awesome perspective thank you for sharing it uh what are you what are you what are you doing now what is so this post world championships are you still in university are you doing things outside of swimming are you still are you still training at this very moment um what's what, what does your look like life look like today I'm training um a little bit, yeah, still. Um next week uh I'll be going to a, a camp before European Championships uh to Spain and then we fly to Rome and right now I'm also working on on another project that we're doing with my friends uh for Ukraine and um to bring people together and to to be you know, with our actions and our thoughts with the Ukraine and to to honor the losses and the, and yeah, so kind of doing a bit of a bit of swimming and a bit of <laughs> life and also working on this project. So university starts in the fall. So yeah, just being home, enjoying it and enjoying the summer, walking my dog. <laughs> That's a, that that sounds like a like a good summer. Um, <laughs> yeah. So so looking forward, or I don't know, maybe you haven't. Maybe you have. Have you allowed yourself uh, with where you're at um, in swimming right now? Have you allowed yourself to look to the future? Do you have long term goals for yourself at this point, or do you know? Okay, I want to shoot for 2024. I want to shoot for beyond that. I want to shoot for next summer at world championships. Have you allowed yourself to look into the future at all? Mm, not so much, to be honest. I'm not, I'm not sure. I do think about that, but at the moment, um, I'm just, yeah, I'm going to go to the European championship and, and, and then see what happens, how I feel. And yeah, <laughs> that's it really. One, one month ahead. <laughs> And then I know I'm gonna go to the university, you know, from the September. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, that that seems like a a great look ahead. Um, I am curious. Just you know, we've talked about a lot. I really appreciate you taking the time to discuss all of this. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. For yeah, you've me. absolutely. You've you've been through a lot in your career. Um, and as, as you spoke about, you were in the UK for a long time, you know, experienced all the success, Olympic champion at such a young age, and then went through, um, you know, a lot of different periods, a lot of highs and lows, I'm guessing. Um, so for, if there are younger athletes who are listening right now, um, is there advice you would give them, you know, if they're experiencing a lot of success or maybe not as much success, um, at a young age about just being a young athlete and being in the spotlight well i think you know everyone's circumstances are different and you know 
everyone's going to react to, you know, success or failure differently. But I think, you know, one of the keys is I think having courage to talk about, you know, how you're feeling along the way. And, and, and I think it's important to have some people that you feel safe uh, around and that you can really, you know, open up to. And yeah, I think that's important, you know, to, to be able to swim well or achieve anything you have to, you know, feel good. And, and, um, and, and yeah, I think that's a huge, huge thing, huge, huge priority. So, um, voice your problems or whatever you have going on and don't keep things to yourself too much. I mean, with safe people, of course, and, um, and don't forget that it's about enjoyment. I think it's, you know, it's the huge part is about, you know, loving what you do. So make sure you love what you do and, and do whatever. <laughs> You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.